in the next two to three classes, we're going to get into more of the vintage components and um, classic, very popular limiters, especially ones that have been emulated. Um, there are four basic types of vintage processors. There are Veramu processors, uh, the Fairchild being the most popular, Optical, the LA2A, LA3A, which is the Teletronics series, FET um, uh, compressors, which are uh, the URI 1176, was, was the um, most uh, popular, and then uh, VCA compressors. Uh, the earliest that I know of is the TG12345, but the DBX160 and the SSL compressors are the most popular. Now, I didn't put all of them in here. These are just some examples. And uh, just to kind of give you uh, a quick show and tell of these, you know, um, the LA2A, um, there were variations or, or different versions of the LA2A. There was an LA2, there was an LA2A, um, there were, um, you know, where they made improvements on the circuit boards and all of those sorts of things, cleaned up the noise and stuff like that. Classic optical limiter, right? Classic optical limiter as a broadcast limiter. The guy who developed this was actually working in the military and he primarily worked on optical components. And when he went to broadcast um, and, and working with broadcast, he found it annoying to be adjusting levels all the time for, you know, for the different um, uh, things. He wanted something that would basically keep the levels even from one thing to the next. And he used his knowledge of optical components to create an optical compressor. And this completely changed things. You know, he created a version that had no tubes, only transformers. That's the LA3A. So this was a, a less expensive version without the tubes and it has a different sound, a sonic characteristic where this works great for vocals and basses because it has a glassy, shiny, real presence to it. Um, the LA3A has a little bit more of a ballsier quality, right? With the transformers, a warmer characteristic, better for guitars and things like that. Also good on basses if the bass is really bright. Uh, something with a bit more grit to it, okay? Uh, the Fairchild 670 is a classic um, Veramu uh, compressor. So there are many compressors that have tubes in the circuitry, um, but if the tubes are not part of the game reduction circuit, then it's not a Veramu compressor or a Veramu limiter. So what this means is that, and essentially the way Veramu limiters work is that you're um, using the bias current, which determines the saturation characteristic of the tube or saturation state of the tube, and you're varying that or you're controlling that based on the input signal. And that's what is causing the compression to occur. And that's the, the very most, like very basic, simplest explanation that I can give and uh, of all of that, you know? So this is like, um, you know, um, the, what many people call the holy grail of of limiters i mean this has i think like in the mono version or the stereo version has like something like 26 tubes in the circuit not all of them are used for um for gain reduction um but it also has transformers really hefty transformers the thing weighs like 75 pounds it's just like a it's a truck you know and these things are extremely expensive they're you know these things go back to the 1950s you know so you know they're very old uh, and if you got a really good working one, then you got like a, you know, that is, you know, in good working condition, then it probably is worth $75,000, you know, crazy. Um, an old classic VCA style compressor is the TG12345. This is really one of the first uh, VCA compressors ever made um, and uh, made um, at Abbey Road Studios um, uh, by EMI. And uh, so this was, it is a really simple, um, the threshold is it's, everything is always compressing. <laughs> it's sort of the craziest design and so impossible to, to uh, really explain without audio example that I'll save that as part of the class. But a classic VCA compressor, a really very simple VCA compressor is the DBX compressor. This is really a game changer for people because there was nothing really like this unless you had a TG12345 console. And this is still completely different. This had a variable ratio control, which that didn't have. You had a threshold. Um, and it had, uh, with that variable compression control from one to one to infinity one, you actually have a pretty broad range of possible uses for um, this. So, you know, if you go with a lighter ratio and a lower threshold, you're going to get more consistent 
uh, game reduction. If you have a higher threshold and a higher ratio, you can get really aggressive kind of pumping movement out of it. Really amazing. So VCA compressors um, are on the aggressive side. A less aggressive, more cleaner sounding compressor is a FET compressor. So each one has its own characteristic. Optical compressors add a smoothness, a glassiness, um, a presence to a sound. Optical compressors add like um, really rich low end and, and a high end sizzle for a lot of size and, and body. Um, um, the DBX or VCA compressors are more about aggressive accuracy and movement. And the FET compressors, um, uh, field effect transistors. Um, so these like solid state um, components here. And this also has transformers built into it. Um, really simple um, fixed thresholds. You bring up your input gain to, to determine how much signal above threshold. You have ratio controls. Uh, you could hit all the buttons in at the same time, uh, which is the setting from the unit, which puts it into a hyper compression mode. And you have a very cool uh, attack and release settings, variable attack and release settings, which was um, really, really, really a powerful thing back then like it made it like probably one of the most flexible compressors and you could compress by significant amounts without a lot of tonal coloration one of the problems with uh, um Veramu and optical uh limiters is that when you hit them really hard the tonal characteristic changes like the the actual sound can collapse if you hit it too hard and sound very different so it's harder to get it to work a little bit more consistently whereas this gives you so much more control uh, with the attack and release settings in terms of shaping a sound. The early ones were silver face, uh, and there were many variations of this. Uh, these are brighter, more open sounding, and, and the black face ones were warmer sounding with less noise. Uh, so they, they basically are functionally the same, although they have a different characteristic sound that's very unique uh, and very cool. So those are just some of the basic vintage things, and we'll bring in some others as well. Some of them I'm going to have in the next section, in the next class, and that's what I'm going to do in the Class 6 preview. So let's move right on to that.